Hello, everybody. I'm Greg Giglio, principal of Homestead High School, and uh, here with the weekly video. Um, explain why I'm dressed this way. The, today is actually Thursday. I'm having to film this on Thursday rather than on Friday, uh, and we are still in the middle of dress up week for homecoming week. So this is 80s week. So I got my skinny tie and all that kind of stuff. So normally, no, I don't dress this way, but it has been fun sort of doing the spirit days with everybody. So uh, I had a good time with that. It's been a lot of fun at homecoming, but um, that's not what you're here for. You are here to hear uh, the weekly video messages. So I'm going to pull that up right now. And there we are. But, um, and so I'm going to get started for the, this is the uh, Friday of October 15th. Like I said, I, this is Thursday, but uh, you know, where I'm filming it on Thursday instead of Friday, but here are our shout outs and recognitions for the week. So we got a few of them. Um, we had one for Jessica Kirby, who is a, a resource teacher and our leadership teacher. Uh, and so just all her help and guidance in making this homecoming week a success. You met some of the students last week. And again, we couldn't have done this without their hard work, without the other class advisors and all that. But again, uh, Jessica Kirby got a shout out in this week's uh, survey. Uh, we also got a shout out to Miss Candy Marug, who is our ASB financial tech. Um, and, and it was for being so helpful with the AP testing sign up. So that was been happening and a lot of work to get those, uh, all those kids registered for that and signed up. So she's done a great job with that. So thank you, Candy. Um, we had a shout out to um, two of our field hockey coaches, Katie Heaney, who's also a math teacher, and Donna Keith. Um, and the, the shout out was for being the best coaches and for uh, making this a great season. So thank you to coaches Katie Heaney and Donna Keith. Um, we also had another shout out for our Terry Fortson and our food services crew. Um, they are now averaging between 800 and 1,000 students fed every brunch or lunch. Um, so again, at some days they're making as many as 2,000 meals uh, to get served out there to kids. Uh, and we thought it would go down a little bit after it got started, but uh, nope, they're, they're going stronger. They're picking up more kids as we go along. So again, thank you for uh, being uh, such a great crew. Uh, and then finally for Matt Wright, who is one of our social studies teacher, and he's also a boys varsity basketball coach. Um, but uh, the, the shout out was for being so understanding and always caring for his students. So thank you to all of those folks who listed above um, and for all of you who sent something in. So thank you very much for that. Going to move on to questions and concerns. We didn't have a whole lot this week, to be honest. Um, so it's going to be a shorter video than normal. Um, but uh, there was a question that had a bunch of questions in this one. So I'm going to try and answer them all. But uh, the start off saying, how many students are there at Homestead? And so they wanted it broken down by class size. So if you can see here, we have 595 students in the senior level, 561 at junior. Sophomores have 573 and our freshmen have 554. Now, this is actually the first time we have not had 600 or more students in, in a single class. We have had classes, years where all four classes have over 600 kids. Um, and so we are at, uh, currently at 22, um, 2,283 students. Um, we are the largest school in the district. However, this is not the largest that we have been. We have been as, as high as 2,500 students. Um, and, uh, you know, so we, we have a little bit of space left from that. Um, we are staffed appropriately. So when we look at how many teachers we need, to, how many students there are, we have all uh, of, our, of our positions are filled. We have all the sections going that we're supposed to have. So we are, we are okay there. Um, there's some tight classes uh, because again, we did go down, but then we kind of slightly went up uh, to where we higher than they had projected us. So um, we actually have a few more students here than we thought we would. So we did have to open up a couple other sections and uh, try and, and maneuver some of those overcrowded classes away. But again, those were a handful of classes, not every classroom kind of thing. Um, I think one of the things that is making it feel a little bit crowded here is the fact that we're down one building. Um, that's the A building, and that's the one that's being worked on. That is 12 classrooms in there. Um, so we have to split, spread those teachers around. So our classes are being used a lot more. There are teachers who are sharing classes. And then also just the physicalness of having to walk around the A building, where before you used to be able to kind of walk past it and get over to the other side of campus. It may, might create some feelings of crowding. But um, in terms of being overcrowded, no, we, we are actually in a little bit better position in terms of space just because we have fewer students. Um, and part of that question was also, why can't we do something like an open enrollment like they have at Lindbrook and Cupertino High School? And then, and what happened a few years back is Lindbrook's uh, population was going way down. And so they were 
dipping below 1,700 students. They thought it might even get down to 16 or, or even 1,500 students. And so there was an open enrollment between Lindbrook and Cupertino because Cupertino was growing pretty significantly and was upwards of around 2,100 students. And so they, they allowed some students to voluntarily go switch over from Cupertino to Lindbrook that is still in existence right now. Um, but uh, again, that was because they were pretty significantly low and, they, and, and those schools are right next to each other. They share uh, a border basically. And so that made sense for those students to be able to go over there. Um, you know, Monta Vista has gone down pretty significantly in the last few years, last 10 years when before I got here, they were the biggest school. Now they're down around 1900 students. Um, so again, that might make sense that like somebody like a homestead and, and a Monta Vista would be an open enrollment, but that's not something that's in agreement right now. Uh, there is a long process to go through that. Um, I'm not sure that that ever will, because again, you know, we were looking at a significant swing over at the Lindbrook uh, Cupertino area. Um, and we're not looking at as big a swing as uh, over here. But again, that, that's something that the people above my pay grade uh, make that decision. And uh, so uh, that's not in, in effect right now. But um, again, we're not overcrowded, so we don't really need to relieve any, any stress on that. Um, and Lindbrook isn't undercrowded. They, you know, they are lower than they've been for a while. But um, again, they have plenty of room for the folks they have on campus. Um, there was a question, and I believe this one came from a student about why do we not have a drill for bomb threats since we have them for run, hide, defend and for fire and for earthquake. Um, and this is probably in re, you know, response to those the three phony uh, bomb threats that were called into local high schools uh, in the past weeks. One was to Los Altos, one was the presentation, one was to St. Francis. Um, what we did after those started happening, because there was Los Altos, I think, happened on a Friday, and then presentation in St. Francis happened on either the Monday or Tuesday the following week. The day after that, we sent out, or I sent out, a reminder to all the staff uh, about some of our procedures and make sure you're reviewing those with students. Um, and again, the drill for a bomb threat is really the same as a fire drill or you, know, you basically evacuate to an assigned area. Um, and so there really isn't anything else to practice. We already practiced that with the fire and earthquake drills that we did earlier. Um, the biggest can, difference is, and which is something we couldn't practice anyway, would be a controlled release to parents, which is really where it takes so long to get students back to their parents. Because we don't just say, okay, we have a bomb threat, everybody go home. You actually have to make sure parents come pick up kids and there is a whole process to that. Um, again, we don't go through and publicize all these processes. We don't publicize kind of where you know, kids are assigned to and that kind of thing, because again, we wanna keep those confidential in terms of just the safety of our students. Um, and when those situations happen, your teachers will know what to do and you just need to follow their directions. But again, in that kind of situation, it is the same as, a, as an evacuation drill. Um, more about the uh, Skinny Wednesdays, where there was a couple more emails in there about that. And again, um, one of the questions or concerns that came up was saying, you know, the responses that I gave were really only about the, the, the staff, the adults, not the students, and shouldn't the students be, you know, the, the, the people that we're making the decisions about. And, and I, I don't disagree with that. Um, I, I do want to say, though, that the things I mentioned, while they, they directly affect adults, like, you know, schedules and deliveries and activities, they also really do affect the students because if we don't have the right, you know, like I said earlier, we have all the, we're properly staffed, but if we were all of a sudden start to switch up schedules and now a teacher can't teach on a certain day because they've made arrangements, you know, they're a part-time teacher, they've made arrangements for their kids and they can't get changed those kinds of things, um, we might have to hire a new teacher. And so that changes things up, right? So that does affect the students. Um, the most biggest thing though, really, when you're talking about switching out days or getting rid of days, uh, it does start to change things like pacing. And so um, that's the whole planning so that ultimately affects the students. So um, yeah, there are some things that you know would affect the, the adults as much as it would affect the students. Uh, we have to think of both. And yes, the students are most important, but um, there are, we need the adults to run the school. So we've got to make sure that we're, we're, we're keeping those things in line. Um, but again, you know what we are looking at doing is, like this other person said, if you can't change the days, can't we change how things are done on campus? And that's one of the things that we are looking at. So um, we've had lots of meetings and conversations about what are some things that different uh, course alike teams or departments could do to try and look at things like workload or when should we do assessments? And you know, could we add in things like other schools are doing and some of our individual teachers are doing like scheduling things as wellness Wednesdays? You know, not that they're getting rid of everything on, on Wednesdays and doing deep breathing exercises, but maybe they're adding something in for stress release. Maybe it's a three minute, deep breathing exercise, or maybe it's a, a check-in that they do on Wednesdays, or as some people call it, nothing new, nothing do on a Wednesday. Um, so right now, there are lots of individual teachers that are doing those kinds of things. 
Um, as the principal, I don't get to mandate that they have to do this or not do that in terms of what's going on for curriculum in the classroom, because that's the teacher's area, right? They're the experts. They're the ones who have set the pacing guides. They're the ones who are, are creating the lessons. And so for me to come in and, and override that is actually not something that I have the power to do. But it is a conversation that we're talking about. It is things that we're looking at. Um, you know, again, the, the, even if we say, okay, we're going to start switching up completely how we do Wednesdays in terms of no assignments or no assessments, that kind of thing, that's going to take some time. And it's also going to push and change the pacing guides. Because again, I want you to imagine we plan out the whole year. And so we say, okay, we have X amount of days to do, you know, this amount of curriculum. Well, if we start to switch that up, we have to change homework assignments and when things are due and, and right, it changes, it, it starts to domino down the line. So uh, there are some, some, some pieces that we have to lay in before we just snap our fingers and make that decision. Um, and again, one of the things that teachers would also ask that the parents and students really look at is, organizing the way they do their work, you know, don't procrastinate, don't do those kinds of things. So again, I think this is going to be a joint effort through the year. Um, and again, it is something though that we are talking about. It's something we're trying to alleviate. I think it's going to be an all hands on deck kind of thing to really make it change though. So again, just wanted to try and answer a couple of those questions there. Um, and I said, it was, a, it was a quick one this week. Um, we have some important dates. Uh, there's a few things that have changed on here. Uh, the, the title of the people are, what's the, what is the fall play this year? It is a play called The Boarding House. So um, I actually don't know what The Boarding House is about, um, but if it's being done by our, uh, our, our drama department, I'm sure it's going to be fantastic. Um, again, we still have the uh, due dates coming up for the senior yearbook ads and the senior quotes. So please make sure you're doing that. We've got our um, canned food drive coming up in the beginning of November, as we also have the winter sports season coming up. Uh, we have an, a, an event called Cash for College. So those folks who are looking to do college and are looking for some uh, financial aid in that way, these are some good meetings. So again, go on to our website, go to our College and Career Center page, and there'll be more information there. It's also on our calendar. Um, just again, so you know, the 11-5 is the end of the second grading period. Again, this is progress reports. It's a snapshot. It's not a final grade. So I mean, this is kind of the last shot you have with the last six weeks of the semester to then figure out whether you're gonna get a better or lower grade. So again, it's pretty important, um, more important than the first semester, but again, these are these are signposts so that you know if you're headed in the right direction or not. Um, and again, as always, you can always see your students grade by looking at Schoology. That's a current up-to-date grade. Um, but again, these are ones we just take as a snapshot every six weeks um, in the semester. So we, we do first grading period, second grading period, and then final uh, grades for the semester. Then second semester we do uh, in the first grading period, second grading period, and final grades again. Um, we have, uh, I wanted to point out, we have a four-day weekend coming up in the middle of, um, actually two four-day weekends coming up in the middle of November. Uh, we've got Veterans Day. I mean, it falls on a Thursday this year, so the Friday is actually also a holiday, so please make sure you understand that. Um, there's no school on the 11th or the 12th of November. And same thing for Thanksgiving. Uh, there's no school on the 24th and 25th. Thanksgiving is actually that Thursday. Uh, there is a special schedule on the 23rd as well, and that should be posted on our Bell Schedules page on our website. Um, so you can take a look at that one. Uh, and just because I've kind of been mentioning it, might as well put it out there for you. The 16th is the end of the first semester. Um, so we are getting pretty close to that. Um, again, you know, just wanted folks to be aware that it doesn't surprise them. Um, but uh, yeah, that, the uh, first semester uh, end is in sight. Um, so we can keep that on your calendars and make sure your students are staying up on their work. Um, Thank you for sticking with us. And again, short one this week. Uh, we will have a guest star next week. I uh, couldn't get anybody this week because of homecoming. And again, explains my 80s outfit. Uh, I don't normally dress this way, but hope you enjoyed this throwback tie. Um, some of these ties are older than the staff members that are here on campus. But uh, have a great week, and we'll see you again next week. Take care.